Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. Let me turn you guys up. Where we are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. I hope you're ready for this day. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only Live Past Crazy Special. So what better place to be than here with me? Thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to do so. Thank you for inviting others to the show. We appreciate you doing that as well. Get my feel here. So we can get this show started because I was a minute late. So the show is going to be quick today. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Rolling over here. I don't know, girl. Facebook was had me tripping this morning. I was like, I don't see JoJo's notification. What's going on? I was a whole minute late, child. <laughs> I was trying to open up a pack, open up this little thing, and I couldn't get it open. And I was like, oh, I'm a minute late. But I'm good. <laughs> ah, this two conversations, it's a confessions about everyday life. Everyday life, life man. Right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> That is everyday life. Let's get started with our quote for this morning, guys. There are only two mistakes one can make along this road to truth, and that's not going all the way and not starting. There are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth, and that's not going all the way and not starting. That's by Buddha. Good morning. So, um, uh, in looking at this, turn your phone up. She said she can't. Uh, she can't hear us. I got mine wide open, <laughs> and y'all know I talk loud. Sometimes, what I found with Facebook mm -hmm. is um, they. You have to go out and come back in because you can't hear the, the sound on the video sometimes. Oh. I've noticed that lately. I don't know what it is. I've updated my apps. I've done everything that I know to do, but I've, I've recognized that too. Um, can you, well, can you, obviously you can hear me, right? Yeah. All right, all right. But yeah, I've noticed that too. So that may be a fix um, on this uh video broadcast this morning hopefully let us know if you can or you cannot if you continue we may have to go back out but that quote was by buddha there are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth not going all the way and not starting so i want you to think about standing in your truth and jojo says this all the time here on the show standing in your truth are you truly doing what you're called to do or are you simply doing the day-to-day -day minutia just going through just to get it done mm -hmm. right so you can get to the next day mm -hmm. Um, what I wanted to also share, there are some things in the news that I want you guys to be aware of because we always talk about investing. Yes, I'm Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yeah, I said it. America's number one. And there are some things that happen that allow us to be able to invest and buy wonderful companies on sale. But we got to recognize what those events are. See, there are some things out there that are happening that can potentially put these companies on sale so you guys are aware. Thank you, guys. Thank you for confirming. Good morning, Sandy. Thank you for joining us as well. And thank you, Kim. So, guys, I, I read this morning Uber. Everyone's familiar with Uber, right? You download the Uber app and you can drive um, if you want to start your own business and things of that nature. But the Uber human resources chief resigned. And you remember there was a Reuters report that was out. Um, there was an internal probe into the investigations around discrimination. Racial bias claims were actually made. And basically what they're saying, her name is Lane Hornsey. They're saying that, you know, she, um, let's, let me backtrack a little bit. She joined Uber about 18 months before these allegations started. Okay, about 18 months before all of the allegations started around the sexual discrimination and uh, sexual harassment and discrimination. Mm -hmm. So she has resigned as a result of the fact that they said they did an investigation and she didn't follow up on the discrimination claim. Right? <laughs> so there's some racial things that happen. I mean, I don't have all the facts. I just know what they've reported in the news. But those are the types of things that we have to be aware of and have these stocks on your watch list 
when these events happen, because when stuff like this happens, things happen in the market. Also, um, still talking about Uber, Uber's going to lay off 100 drivers. But these were the drivers for the autonomous cars. You remember they, were, they tried to, that project in Pittsburgh, right, where they wanted the selfless driver cars, but they had the accident. Um, the, ac the selfless driver car killed a lady. And so they're, they're laying off 100 of those people who were responsible for those self-driving cars as they go back to the drawing board to come up with more plans around what it is that they'll do. You say, well, Lynn, why are you telling me about this? Guys, I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you how to be aware of what's happening in the marketplace that's going to allow you to invest in companies and buy them on, on sale. So the other thing that ties into that, because we've been talking about racism um, and things of that nature, I'm going to get into the topic for this morning, but there's one other thing I want to share with you so you can start paying attention to what's happening and deciding and picking the stocks you want to invest in. Remember Chipotle? Uh, some people say Chipotle. But uh, Chipotle, back in the day when they had that huge salmonella scare, right? There was a huge salmonella scare. People stopped going to Chipotle because they were afraid they were going to get sick. Same thing happened at Jack in the Box some time ago, right? You remember the scare? There was a bacterial infection that got into the food. So with Chipotle, what happened was uh, there was a huge drop in the price of that stock at that time because of that scare. People didn't want to eat there because they were afraid they would get sick. And in some cases, people were dying. So they were people stayed away from Chipotle. Those individuals who bought into Chipotle during that time of fear and have kept their money in there, they've now doubled. You hear me? They've doubled their money per share of the stock in Chipotle Mexican Grill. Y'all go look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. It is real. They have doubled their growth. So what you now have to recognize, guys, is to pay attention. Everything that's happening out there is if it's connected to a company that has shares that you can buy into, pay attention to it. But make sure it's something that we talk about all the time. Make sure it's a company you know, like, love, and you understand. Don't, especially if you're just starting out. Make sure you understand it. Let's master the basics first. I talk about that all the time. So let's get back to that. I just wanted to put that out there. That was a teachable moment this morning. So I hope you caught that. Now, and that's why I'm Lynn Demis, the financial rebound coach, America's number one. Yeah, I said it. All right, guys. So look at this today. The topic for today, and I received this video again. And the, the video is about the racist banking history in America. Okay, and many of you may have seen this video going around on social media in regards to the fact that for every $100 in the white family, as far as wealth, there's only $5.04 in the black family. So for, one every, one, for every $100 that a white family owns, there's roughly $5.04 in the black family. And the reason that they were sharing in this particular video that this is happening is not because everyone didn't jump in and pull themselves up by their bootstraps, right? It says here, um, they were talking about what has happened institutionally, what has happened in history that has now made this a reality for many families. And the thing that they started out talking about was... Um, centuries of racist banking practices that had come into place. And then uh, Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln, after the emancipation, you remember the Emancipation Proclamation, the freeing of the slaves, then he said there needed to be reparations. There needed to be, for every family, they're supposed to get your 40 acres and a mule. We've all heard about that. We, you know, they taught us about that somewhat, right? 
in history class, somewhat, depending upon which guy school you went to, more than likely if you went to an HBC, you, you got this entire lesson. Um, how, but let me move on. I digress. Um, but after that, after that uh, was initially put into place, it didn't go through because Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, that order was reversed by the next president, Andrew Johnson. And what Andrew Johnson said, we're going to do something different. We're not going to give them 40 acres and a mule, right? That's not what we're going to do. We're going to give them a bank. And it was called the Free Man's Bank, all right? The Free Man's Bank was given. And, and so that was uh, an alternate, right? for those those freed slaves. That's why it was called Freeman Black. So the freed people, of course, put their monies into that bank. But then the owners of those banks failed to provide loans to the Black family. Okay? They wouldn't loan them money. It didn't matter how much money you made. Even those who made high incomes that were comparable to the white family, they were not given those families loans. So they're saying that these practices are baked into what's happening into, in America that have kept us down. And I do say that there is some credence behind that. Even uh, in, uh, right before 2007, 2008, when we had the huge housing foreclosure, it was due to a lot of those subprime mortgages, right? the subprime mortgages that many of us received. And I know this because I had one of those subprime mortgages. Didn't realize it at the time. I was just glad to be able to get a house, but I was one of those subprime mortgage homeowners at the time, not realizing exactly what was happening. So there are some things that have happened institutionally that can keep you in poverty. But what I want to share this morning, and you tell me if you agree or disagree with this fact, that there are some things that we can now do differently as a result of being educated on the situation and knowing what these institutional practices have been. There are some things that we can do differently that are now going to move us to our next, right? And what I want to share, and I'm not not to get all biblical and Christian-y, but it is what it is. Proverbs 23 and 7 basically tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So how do you think about yourself, right? What are the things that you're thinking about yourself in regards to the way that you're living your life? Because we're supposed to have life and have it more abundantly. And this is not just in your finances. This is in every area of your life. So what are the things now that we can do differently that are going to help us to push past this craziness, right, to borrow from Miss JoJo over there? What are those things that we can now do differently that are going to allow us to be able to close the gap? And there are many articles out there that have been written on this topic. There are many articles that talk about the fact that it would take 200 plus years for us to close the wealth gap and all of these different statistics that have been stated over and over and over and over. But do you not realize and recognize, guys, that there are some things that we can do? We cannot control everything, but there are some things within our own control as a people, as an individual, that you can now do that can help you to change your situation. If you agree or disagree, let me know. See, that's why we're on here this morning, guys, to have this true confession and conversation. Because in, in my experience, guys, because these things have happened to us, we are not those things, right? Just because something happened to me doesn't mean that I have to live to whatever that thing is. The same thing in just because somebody says that I am something doesn't mean that's what I am. I am what I say I am, right? Let me backtrack. I am what he says I am. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> but I have to now own that. I now have to recognize that. And I now have to walk in that. And, I, I, and there's so much more that I want to share on this topic. But I know we don't have that much time. Miss JoJo, how are we doing on time? It's 730. Okay. All right. Because I know that's my problem. I know. We, we got two options here. And for those listening... Lynn, and uh, let me know what you think about this. We can come on tonight and finish it at five, 
or Lynn can come on into the Fearless Morning Show page this morning and finish and finish the conversation because I think it's you know it's important that we understand and know and get all the facts. Good morning, Charlene. How you doing? And get all the facts and get all the history. Then what you think about that? You want to come back this evening or you want to go on the Fearless Morning Show this morning and finish it? So uh, I have a challenge in that because I'm headed to Virginia. Oh, that is right. I need to see um, you too. Doggone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so guys, what we'll do is we'll figure out how to, if I don't get to figure it, complete it today, then I'll just tag it on for tomorrow mm -hmm. because we have some traveling and other things that are happening today. Um, but guys, it's very important that we, and when I say we, I mean, we as a people, we as a community, and it's not just the color thing because SES, low SES does not have a color. Can we say that again? SES is socioeconomic status, okay? Mm -hmm. Low SES does not have a color. It has, there are behaviors that are common within low SES. There are characteristics that are common within low, ES, low SES, mm -hmm. but it truly does not have a color. So what are those things that we can now do now? Because I was specifically talking about racial uh, racist banking history, those practices that were institutionalized, what are some of the things that we can now do differently? One of the things, guys, that we talked about, and first and foremost, is get involved in your area. Mm -hmm. Get involved in your area. Do you even know when the planning commission meets for your county? Mm -hmm. I live in Gwinnett County. The next meeting is August 7th. In Lawrenceville, that's where you guys need to be. If you happen to be in Gwinnett County and you won't hear listening, that's when the next meeting is. I hope to see you there. But we need to be involved in these planning commission meetings so we know what's happening. See, that's how some of these areas are deemed low income versus high income. That's where the wealthy you know, conversations happen. That's how they determine whether or not properties in this area are low income, middle class, or high income housing, and everything else in between. See, you have to be at the table. You have to be in the conversation. Well, most of us, dare I say, have not even taken the time to look to even see where the meetings are. We probably didn't even vote for the people. Who is your leader? Who are your leaders? Who are the leaders in your area. See guys, these are the tough conversations that we need to be having because until we get involved, until we are participating in this process, then guys, <laughs> those institutional practices mm. will continue to reign mm. and we'll continue to buy into that because we haven't done a thing about that. See, I did not mean to go there, but I guess somebody needed to hear that. Uh, this morning. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. I'm Lynn Demers, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yes, I said it, America's number one. I'm going to pass it over to my co-host, but I definitely want to talk to you. I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts about this? What are your um, concerns about this? Go to bit.ly slash talk to Lynn, schedule a call with me, or you can and message me on Facebook because oftentimes it's easy for me just to respond back if it's something simple. If it's something more complex, I'm going to send you that link bit.ly slash talk to Lynn so that we can actually get on the phone and have that conversation. But if you agree and you understand those things that I said this morning and you say, I have to do something different, the have to, the thing that you need to start doing differently, of course, is managing a financial foundation and moving to the point where you do invest, guys. Mm -hmm. Investing is mm -hmm. what changes the game for us. Mm -hmm. But we got to learn how to do that. We got to join in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Only 36% of Blacks invest. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. 36%. Not even half of us. Not even half of us invest. So, guys, there's some room for growth. Because there's a, that's a, for every $100 in the white family, there's $5.04 on average 
in the black family. Mm -hmm. There are some things we can do and do better. Go to bit.ly slash seven day prep investing. Get started on that investing course, guys. Get the basics, build a solid foundation and move to your next. All right, Miss Jojo, I know I said that was it. I'm passing it over to you now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure. Um, and if you, Lynn, do you have a link to the uh, video as well? Because I know uh, you sent it to me. So Lynn, I'll post the link to the video so that you guys um, so that you can watch it as well. And then one important thing about knowing about, I used, I was a county commissioner and let me tell you, she is very, it's very true how those things happen. We're in a meeting, it's late, we're tired and decisions are made at the spur of the moment. They are made quickly and they're made more than likely by people that do not look like us, but the decision affects uh -huh. all of us. And as a black woman, sitting at that table with the other county commissioners is very eye-opening about what they talk about, how they talk about you, and the words that they use to describe you and your neighborhood. So if you think it's not important for you to get involved, please, you can go right. sit at the table. Who am I to be sitting at the county commissioner's table? I'm nobody. That piece of dust scared the devil out of me. <laughs> I was ready to fight. <laughs> I thought it was a spider. But anyway, who am I to be sitting at the table and you are not to be sitting at the table? Y'all better go. Because let me, to apply, and here's something you may not know. To apply to be a county commissioner, you simply, you go to the website and they show you all the openings that they have on their board. Sometimes, just to get in at the bottom level, no experience is required. You just have to live in the county that you are applying for. That's it. So get out there, become involved in the in the conversation that has to do with you and your community. And, and if you like me, I'm a quiet person, but after a while I kept sitting there and listening, I was like, wait a minute, I got something to say. And it's going to bubble out. I know, Charlene, it's too early. I like to broke my wrist off. Y'all know these are, my, these are my everyday, I wear these bracelets regardless. And it landed right in the center and I hit like that. It hurt. But thank God it wasn't a spider because I, I would have leaked over this phone. Do you understand? <laughs> I would have done it like for real. All right, guys, let me tell you the fillers thought for the day is I want you to find the anchor when you're afraid. When you're starting this journey, and you're afraid to make challenges, you're afraid to do something different, I need you to find your anchor. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I mean by anchor is that is something or someone that is going to be there to hold you down or to remind you. It can be your why. It can be whatever you want to call it, but it needs to be something that's going to hold you. So when you start out on your way, you're not just floating away. You have a foundation. You got something that's going to bring you back. So you need to find the anchor. If you don't have one, the Fearless Morning Show is here for you to provide that anchor and the information that you need so that you can remember your why or why you're going, what you're doing it for, because we are, we are building life legacies over here. Because if you love your last name as much as I love mine, you want to you make sure that it prospers. So we are building life legacies over here. You've got to find an anchor. So when you're afraid and you're starting out on this journey, don't think you're out here all willy-nilly by yourself. That's why I told you yesterday it's important to check your circle because your circle can have you acting crazy. Right, Charlene. That's right. I know your grandma. I think I know your grandfather. You've got to make you and you got to do it. And you'd be surprised when what What's my sticky note? Y'all don't make me break it out. I had to put extra tape on it. Somebody's waiting to hear your voice. They will not move until you move. You got to get involved. So guys, no, try to find the anchor for when you're starting out the, on this fearless journey. If you don't have one, Lynn and I are here for you to help you live past crazy in your life and your finances. And as we close out the show, if you know anybody who is ready to live past crazy, who may just need an inkling of an idea that there is life past crazy. Tell them to come on over here and you, okay, yes, I know your yes, I know your grandfather. Um, tell them to come on over here to the Fearless Morning Show. If they do not have Facebook, that's our YouTube channel where they can check out all of our videos and binge watch them. Um, 
every single day. I upload them every morning or at least by mid-afternoon so they can watch all the shows. So I thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Lynn, anything else we, as we close out this morning? Guys, again, thank you so much for your time. We know time is your most precious commodity, and you you chose to spend it with us, and you cannot get that back. So we are so appreciative of that. Um, don't forget, guys, share this video. Give someone else hope. Help one person every day. That's the goal so we can move to our next. Um, this is not just information. It's about transformation. So go out there, not only and listen and share and talk about it, but be about it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining again to that. That's right. Now that you know you are charged with sharing it with somebody else. So tomorrow, please bring a friend over to the Fearless Morning Show so that we can say good morning and I can sing good morning to them. <laughs> as well so i don't want to leave anybody out you know to hear my wonderful miraculous <laughs> voice <laughs> if anything they will get their laugh for the day so that's all that matters right. all right guys i hope you have an amazing day make sure you join us tomorrow morning bright and early at 7 15 and y'all have a good one talk to you later signing off